Look at the paragliders. Amazing. The plan today is to pretty much go up all the ski lifts I can, because I've paid for a uh, two-day pass or something like this. So I'm going to do that. Look how, look how cool these paragliders are. Loads of them. Lovely weather today. But today is the last day of sun, according to Google Weather. Then the next three days apparently it's thunderstorms, so I don't know what I'm going to do those three days. Maybe uh, catch up on some editing or something. But I'm quickly running out of space on my, on my laptop, I should have bought my hard drive. Anyway, so I'm going to get some breakfast, go up the ski lifts that are open. I can see, I can see that one up there is open. That one's moving. I'm pretty sure the other one back there was moving as well. And that's all I can see at the moment. Alright, so I've had breakfast and I'm on my way to the first ski lift, which is this one here. So I'm hoping I can go up there and then up the second leg of it and then there should be a lake on the other side. have stopped when I got in. Not sure why. Awesome. Right, so this is Le Brevant, which is uh, this is Le Brevant, which I'm hoping will go up and there'll be a second part of this journey which has uh, a lake and a few other interesting things we can explore. So let's explore it together. Wow this one goes quite fast. <laughs> Amazing. A whole cabin to myself, look at this. VIP style. Much better than the uh, Grill de Midi one, which was so crowded, I can't even explain how crowded it was. Wow, look at that. Amazing. This is, this is why buying a two-day ski, ski lift pass is worth it, because although it's expensive, it means that I can because there's only one or two days of sunshine, I can make the most of them. And I really can experience most of the ski lift trails. And it's much better than hiking that. Imagine hiking all the way up this. I'd only be able to do one or two of these a day. But with a ski lift pass, well, we can do five, maybe even eight in one day. Look at this, beautiful. So peaceful as well. Let's set this up there, shall we? Oh no, way too shaky. <laughs> By the way, you should definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel, Transcend Travel, if you haven't already. I'm sure you have already. But, you know. All these rules here. Do not lean out. Don't drop things out of the cabin. Don't smoke. Don't swim. Okay. Oh, and don't stand up. Oops. <laughs> Alright, I'll sit down then. Okay. Wow, there's actually people hiking up this trail. Look at this, there's people, there are people hiking directly up, that must be so tiring. <laughs> All up these zigzags of this trail, look at that. That's dedication. I think what I'll do is I'll make this one 
different video just for this ski lift. And I'll try and record uh, an entire video of the whole ski lift so you can basically see exactly what it's like. Because so many travel vlogs, they edit out all the best bits, and they well no, they only they only give you the best bits, and it means that you don't get to see the whole experience. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be a video of the entire Le Brevant ski lift, start to finish without any edits, so you can start to see exactly what it's like. The snow line is actually quite low for this time of year. Normally it's it's uh, about half of that, so it's only on the peaks which is unusual for this time of year. Oh, we seem to have stopped. I think um, with ski lifts, sometimes what they do is if there's like slack in the rope or if, some, if something's going wrong at the top or the bottom, they'll just stop the ski lift for a minute or so and then it'll start up again. Either that or this is gonna be the start of um, Frozen, that film where they get stuck in the ski lift, although it's not really cold. And I don't think there are really that many wolves here. <laughs> But it gives me a good chance to see what this hiking trail is like. So it's basically just zigzags all the way down. Wow. And it's so um, such a high elevation as well. Really, really difficult to walk on. You can see the paragliders all, the, all across the valley there. Beautiful. I probably would have done that, but it's... Um, it's so expensive, it's about 200 euros just to go up in a... It's about 200 euros just to go up in a uh, tandem paragliding thing. And it's gonna wipe out my budget for this trip, really. I'd rather, I'd rather do things like this and... Because, uh, to be honest, you're gonna see the same views, whether you're here on a ski lift or in the middle of the valley. It's, it's, the views are gonna be similar, really. It's just whether you want to experience the paragliding aspect of it, which... I probably do, but not, not on this trip, anyway. Wow, this, that is an insane elevation. That hiking trail was basically 45 degrees, or even steeper in some parts. Look at that. Wow. It must take absolutely ages to get up, up here from uh, the ground, just walking like that. Absolutely ages. Anyway, while we're here, let's discuss Chamonix in general, I really like Chamonix and I think it's one of those places that you can come back again and again and it always feels refreshing, it doesn't feel like it's, you, you never feel like you've completed it or that it's boring or anything like that because there's just so many different hiking trails and things you can do that you just never get tired of it. The only downside, the only downside of uh, Chamonix is that it's so expensive, really really expensive like for one. For an average meal, so like say a burger and chips for example, you're looking at about 15 euros, sometimes 20 euros. And uh, But apart from that, it's an incredible place. Really good for rock climbing as well. Because I've seen people climb all of these sorts of rocks here, all of the sides over here and things like that. Right, so I think we're nearing the end of the first part of the journey. This is the first leg and I think there's a connecting one just past this, so I don't know if I'll be, I don't know if I'll cut this into a separate video or if I will just film all the way through. I'm not quite sure. I might have a quick break to uh, to enjoy this sight around here. Well, pretty high up now. Okay, so I've got to get ready to jump out of here. They don't. They tend not to stop. Okay, here we go. Right. So I assume now the doors will open. I can already feel that it's colder up here. Very fresh. I'm glad I bought my hoodie. So, so there's the black slope that way. Let's see what's around here. Alright, so we've got a bar, a couple of bars here at the top. And I want to see where the other leg of this journey is. It's actually here, it goes across instead of up. So I'm going to go down there and then catch this lift to that peak over there. That could be interesting. 
because there's a few hiking trails here but I think I'd rather get the ski lift up to that bit first and then explore and see what's over there. Don't know how easy it's going to be but I also don't want to ruin my legs and feet before I've seen all of the ski lifts because I want to make most of this pass that I've paid for, 80 euros for. Oh, I guess this is a lift to go down to that bit but it looks like it's out of order. So we'll go here. I think this one only has one car so it'll be a case of, uh, wait, how do we get in? All right, so this is the second part of the Le Brevin ski lift. This one's, this one's gonna go over to that peak over there, which I think is, yeah, it's the highest peak on this side. So let's go. I guess we have to wait for it to be a full cabin or something. Alright, so that was the second part of it. I think that's actually the last part. We got to the observation deck in a minute. South of England, yeah, boring old, we're rainy from, England. We're from uh, New Zealand. Ah, oh, looks like we can't get up to the top of that thing. Never mind. Too much because it's all slushy. I don't want to make the most of the other ski lifts, but cool. So 
this is Liberville. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to the lake. I think the lake is actually going to be hard to hike to with all this snow. I'll have a look on the map in a second to see where it actually is. But I have a feeling it's on this side. Oh. <laughs> snow is quite dangerous. You can actually see, I don't know if you can see that, that's a lake, so that actually is a, it's frozen. Right over there, that is Lac Bravant, which is frozen, so I don't think I'll be able to get anywhere near that today. So there's a cafe here. I don't think I only have another coffee, but I'm just gonna have a little look, see what's out there. All right, so this tells you which ski lifts are open. It's time to go back to, this, to the village, to the town, and go up to the Grille de Midi. I'm not going to film the descent because it's pretty much the same as the ascent. So you can go and watch that video if you want to see what it looks like. Let's play it in reverse.